Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to pick up from uh, my last video on OpenGL in Max. So we already had introduced JIT World, JIT Gen and uh, GGL Grid Shape, GGL Multiple. So a lot of uh, objects that we are going to use also in this video. So the goal for this video is to create um, an audio waveform visualizer, basically an oscilloscope. And to do that, we are going to use the GGL multiple. So we are going to use a series of 3D shapes and we're going to rescale them uh, in order to represent the audio waveform. So let's start. First thing first, we need to create a JIT world object. So this is the object that contains our 3D world, the rendering context, and I'm going to give it the context name my cool world or something like that you can call it as you want of course now i'm not going to go through uh, the um, attributes of the jit world again because we explained them in the previous videos but anyway just let's just make a quick recap fsaa is full scale anti-aliasing floating means that the window is not going to disappear behind the patch then we're going to say size which is the default size of the window Maybe even set the window position to something where it doesn't bother us. And maybe let's enable it by default. So enable one. And we got our JIT world up and working. Now, if we want to change the background color, we can right click here on the input with the patch unlocked. Take the erase color attribute and then choose a background color that we like. Something like this. Cool. Um, the cheat world is already on by default because of the enable one. If you want to put it off, we can click on this toggle. So we're sending a zero to the cheat world, which then goes out of order. And if we put one, then it works again. Great. So to get an audio input, I'm easy. I'm simply going to use the easy ADC object. So it's called easy ADC, which is our analog to digital converter so from here if we check with the meter object that's the meter object we should be able to see that when i talk uh, we can see the amplitude of my voice appearing here uh, input from the easy adc object okay cool now we need to transform this audio input that we get the signal into a matrix so this means we need to feel a matrix a jitter matrix object with uh, the amplitude values from this audio buffer so basically let's say that this is our that these are our audio amplitude values which by the way they go between minus one and one so this will be our waveform and this is the zero line so this means this is the zero and the values go between one and minus one here so we need to put those values in, uh, this is our audio buffer that comes inside from my microphone. We need to put those values from this buffer inside the matrix. And we are going to do that using an object called JIT catch. So let's create it, JIT catch. So it works like this. It takes an attribute that says, uh, okay, uh, what is the frame size? So how big is this matrix that it's going to fill with the audio buffer? And let's say that the matrix is 100 cells big. So this means that it's going to take 100 samples from this audio buffer and it's going to fill 100 cells with the amplitude values from the single samples, from 100 samples. Okay, so let's connect the JIT catch to my microphone input. And now this object is being filled with the amplitude values from the buffer. Great, so let's actually connect a JITP window object to see if we are getting something out of the object. Now, apparently we are not, and you know why? Because in order for this object to output the matrix that it has inside, it needs to get a bang uh, in order to output its matrix. So we can, for example, create a QMetro 33 active one, in order to send a series of bang to this object. And now you can see that it's outputting the matrix containing the amplitude values. And the amplitude values are represented as brightness, right? They go from minus one to one, but of course we cannot see the uh, brightness of values less than zero. So these values that are here less than zero because negative values are simply represented as black. 
uh, but that's what's going on. So this matrix represents the amplitude of the samples in the range minus one to one. Now, how can this be that this is the range minus one to one and it's not just uh, positive values? Well, that's because this matrix is of type float32. If we connect a JIT FPS GUI object here, we can see that the type of this matrix is float32 and this allows us to go also in the negative range and also to have even values that are bigger than one or minus one. Now, we don't really want to use a QMetro object. We mostly just want to connect the bang that comes out from the JIT world middle output to the JIT catch. So, as you know, as we saw in the previous videos, from this output here comes out a bang for every frame that we render with the JIT world object. So, at every frame, we are sending a bang to the JIT catch object, which is sending out uh, the matrix containing the amplitude values that it has inside. So, pretty neat. Great! Now, what we are going to do is to use these amplitudes as the scale value of some 3D shapes. So let me get there slowly. Let's say that we got a GGL grid shape object, which renders to my cool world. And as a shape, this is a cube. So this we got our cube, it's very big now. Uh, it's actually covering the wall window. So in order to get a bit farther from the shape, let's create a GGL camera. And let's actually give it some attributes. So the camera will be our camera in the three-dimensional world. And we are going to give it some attributes in order for it to behave as we want. For example, we want to say that it always has to look at the center by using the attributes look at 000, which is the center of our world, and then lock look one. Again, if you don't remember exactly what these attributes do, check my previous videos on OpenGL in Max. So great, this will be our camera. Let's give it also the tripod attribute, which means the camera is not going to tilt. It's always going to stay parallel to the floor, let's say. And let's create then this object called JIT Anim Drive, which allows us to move every 3D object that we want if we give it the attribute UI Listen, which means it will listen to our keyboard and then speed 20. So now we can use the W, A, S, D, Q, and Z keys to basically move around in our three dimensional world like if it was a video game. And then if you want to reset the camera, we need to send the message anim reset to both the JIT anim drive and GGL camera. Now, I forgot to connect the JIT anim drive to the GGL camera, right? So now if I click on my window and I press the W, A, S, D, Q and Z keys, I can just go around in my world, but always looking at the center of the three dimensional world. And we can see that I've got my cube here sitting there. Uh, let's actually make it a bit prettier by attaching it a GGL material object. So the GGL material is basically uh, the object that allows us to kind of give a material to this three-dimensional shape. So it means kind of, it determines uh, which kind of material this object is done. So it could be, for example, more reflective and be more a metallic material or less reflective and be then uh, uh, like a rubber material. So this decides what materials our object is made of. Cool. So we got our cube rendering nicely. Let's maybe give it another color. So I will go into the GGL grid shape, choose the color, make it red. Exactly. The colors are always in the order red, green, blue, and alpha, as we know. And uh, cool. So now what I'm going to do is to create a JIT matrix here. And simply connect it to the output of the JIT catch object. Why am I doing this? Simply because I want to get the value in the first cell of this matrix. So this is a one-dimensional matrix, right? We can also connect uh, uh, another JIT FPS, another JIT FPS GUI and check the dimension. So we can see that first that this matrix is one-dimensional because it has only one dimension, but you can see that actually its size is continuously changing. And that's because by default, the attribute mode of this JIT catch object is set to zero, which means it's going to output a matrix with a dimension equal to the amount of samples that it has collected since the last matrix went out. 
So this is not exactly the behavior we want. So we will go to mode 2. So it will always output a matrix with a with a width always equal to our frame size. It's anyway going to be a one dimensional matrix and it's going to be the same size as our frame size. Mode 1, for example, it outputs a two dimensional matrix, as you can see, and the second dimension uh, depends on how many samples arrived since the last matrix was output. So that's something that we could use in the fu future, but for the moment we just want to output a one-dimensional matrix that is the same size as our frame size attribute. So let's actually hard code this mode attribute, so mode 2, in order to have a matrix that is exactly 100 cells wide. Now. As I was saying, I want to get just the values in the first cell of this JIT matrix. Now, there is only one value because this matrix is only one plane. We can check it using another JIT FPS GUI. So, this is only one plane. Oh, and let me write down the name of this object. This is JIT FPS GUI. So, there is going to be only one value for each cell of this matrix. So, I'm going to use the get cell message. I'm going to just take the values from the first cell. So the first cell here at the beginning of our matrix, the single value is going to come out here. So get cell zero value, uh, the value is going to be that. So if you want to get just the last value, we can use the zeta l acils object, which will give us the last element in a list. So let's give it a try. Exactly. So it's just going to give us the last element in the list which is the amplitude of the sample stored in the first cell. So let's actually continuously bang this message. So we're going to do like this. We're going to send a bang first to the JIT catch object and secondly to the JIT matrix containing the value. So we get simply the, for every frame, then we get the value of the amplitude in the first sample. We're going to use this value to create a, a list with a scale message into it. And we're going to use this uh, amplitude value as the epsilon scale of this cube. So the value is coming out here from the second output of ZL SILS1. And I'm going to use it as the epsilon scale for this object. So now the object is going to get very small because uh, its normal scale is one and now we just are scaling it for something much smaller. Let's check this out. Yeah, all numbers are very small because the audio amplitude is actually often a very small value. So let's actually first also scale the X and the Zeta for a small value like 0.1, for example, for both the X and the Zeta. I'm going to get a bit closer using my JIT anim drive. And cool, now we can see a bit better that the epsilon scale of this object is being set accordingly to the amplitude of my voice. So to only one sample of my voice coming in through the microphone, through the easy ADC. Uh, let's maybe multiply this amplitude by two or something like that. Test, test, test. Great, and let's then add a little offset. So the epsilon scale will never be smaller than 0.1 in this case. And uh, cool. This seems to be working very well. So this is exactly what we're going to do in the end of this tutorial. By using JITGEN and GTL multiple, we will just have multiple of those shapes and every shape will be assigned at the amplitude of one of the sample from the input buffer. Okay, so we are going to proceed with that in part two of this tutorial. Hope you will keep following and uh, if you got questions or considerations about this, just write them in the comment and see you all in part two of this tutorial. Ciao.